now we talk about uh, these various parts of digestive tract one by one. So let's have a look on the human digestive system, its uh, diagram, then we'll go ahead. In this diagram, you can see that uh, the digestive system, um, uh, the human alimentary canal starts from mouth. Mouth is um, to ingest the food, ingest the food inside. Then comes the oral cavity. Uh, there are different parts of oral cavity. You can see that there are different types of glands associated with the oral cavity. Um, there is a submandibular gland, there is a sublingual gland, um, and uh, there are salivary glands which are associated with this, uh, this uh, oral cavity. Um, then there is the tongue is important part of the oral cavity, the teeth are the part of oral cavity. Then comes the pharynx. Uh, which is actually present on, um, um, on the back side of uh, oral cavity, uh, just below the nasal cavity and above the trachea and esophagus. Then we can see a long canal um, or long tube called esophagus. Um, after esophagus, um, we can see the stomach. Esophagus actually enters inside the stomach. Then stomach enters inside the intestine, a highly convoluted small intestine, which enters into a large intestine and that large intestine as we can see ends into a rectum and an anus. Um, we also can observe in the diagram on um, the left side uh, a large organ called liver and uh, just below the liver the gallbladder, below the gallbladder is the pancreas. So this is a generalized diagram of um, the digestive system of human beings. You can see two other parts attached to the large intestine. One of these is called cecum and the other is called appendix. Appendix is um, a vestigial organ in human beings. Appendix is of no use apparently. Sometimes it gets infected and uh, by a surgery we have to remove it. Uh, but in a uh, few other organisms, appendix is very important. For example, in rabbits uh, who have to eat up the uh, vegetables, this cellulose, this um, um, cecum and appendix, these are very long structures and they have certain enzymes uh, called cellulases and certain bacteria uh, which break down the cellulose present inside the plant material. So they can digest, uh, they can acquire a lot much more energy uh, from these plant materials in comparison to the human. Now we come next, sensing the food. As we know that acquiring food is uh, itself a very important property. When we start acquiring food, first of all we sense it. We look at the food, how it looks like. Uh, is it looks good in its appearance? We smell it. Is it smells good or it smells bad? If it is, if it smells bad, we reject it. Agar khane se koi smell aa rahi ho, to hum ye assume karte hain ki khane mein koi koi problem hai, wo theek nahi hai, aur hum usko reject kar dete. Ye bhi human beings ki ek property hai, ek quality hai. Isi tarah organisms, animals bhi isi tarah se, agar food mein koi smell ho, wo dekhne mein acha na lage, to usko reject kar dete. So we look at the sensory qualities of food as um, this is the first step of food selection. If food looks improper, it is rejected, it is not ingested. Then comes the oral cavity. Through mouth, food enters inside the oral cavity. Um, oral cavity also have its own selection. Our tongue have taste buds. When food enters inside the mouth, we taste it. Our taste buds feel it that what is, was it, what is its taste. If it tastes bad, it is again rejected. So this is another part of food selection that even it smells quite okay, um, it is looking okay, but uh, it is taste, its taste is bad, then this is again rejected. Uh, so food selection is a very important property of particularly the human um, digestive system. Now the second function of the oral cavity uh, is to grind the food. We have teeth um, to grind the food because the next parts of the digestive uh, system, the alimentary canal, the esophagus or stomach or intestines, need smaller parts. And food is uh, that food that we 
take in or ingest by mouth is in larger pieces. Uh, teeth help in grinding of the food. Teeth grind the food and convert them into smaller pieces. Um, then the next um, uh, property of oral cavity or next function of oral cavity is to lubricate the food. Um, that is add some water and uh, salts to it. Um, as we know that salivary glands, the submandibular glands and, uh, uh, and the uh, sublingual glands, all of these produces some uh, sort of mucus and uh, they also have some um, enzymes. Uh, for example, from salivary gland, amylase enzyme is released which break down the starch uh, and the mucus released by different enzymes and different uh, uh, glands lubricate the food, that is make it wet. Uh, so that when it goes into the next parts of the alimentary canal, it do not gives any resistance to those parts. Then another part of the oral cavity, tongue. Uh, tongue also have its own function. Tongue have to roll up uh, the food into the form of a bolus. Tongue roll up the food and convert them into a, um, into a rough circular uh, mass, which is called a bolus. This bolus can then go down the esophagus, um, the next part of the alimentary canal. Between the esophagus and the oral cavity, there is another part called pharynx, uh, which is present behind the oral cavity, above the trachea and esophagus and below the nasal cavity. Uh, the pharynx um, have um, um, one important part called, um, because we know that esophagus and the trachea, the windpipe, which is going towards lung are going side by side and when food is going down from the oral cavity inside the esophagus, uh, body have to or organism have to make sure that this food should not enter inside the windpipe or the trachea otherwise it will be blocked. Um, there is a small part on the back of the um, uh, oral cavity which is called epiglottis, which is cartilaginous. When tongue make the food, convert the food in form of a bolus and throw it back, then the epiglottis goes down and close the windpipe. And uh, the upper part of the um, oral cavity, the roof of the oral cavity, goes slightly up and closes the nose. So that food, when it is going down towards the esophagus through pharynx, cannot enter into the esophagus, uh, uh, sorry, cannot enter into the windpipe, the trachea due to epiglottis because it is covering the trachea and it also cannot go into the nasal cavity because the upper part of oral cavity is uh, closing the uh, nasal cavity. So food goes down into the esophagus. So esophagus is the next part. We call this process swallowing. We are swallowing the uh, bolus, part of food. Uh, if we have a look on the diagram above, uh, we can see that there is tongue, on the back of the tongue there is an extension uh, which is called epiglottis and epiglottis is just present just above the trachea um, and on the back of this trachea we have esophagus. So when tongue rolls up then the, ro the roof of the oral cavity goes up and block the nose. So food cannot enter into the nasal cavity. and this epiglottis, you can see it is in um, a slanting position towards upside, it goes down and closes the um, trachea. So that food directly goes down into the esophagus. Here in the diagram, you can see the process of uh, a bolus going down. Uh, bolus is um, um, shown here with the help of a yellow color. You can see in the first diagram, A from, uh, from left side, a bolus is going down. In the diagram B, uh, it is uh, present, it is passing from the um, pharynx and in this position you can see that epiglottis is closed and the nasal cavity side is also closed. In the third part you can see that food is entering into the esophagus. Now the esophagus. Uh, after pharynx, esophagus starts. Esophagus is a, a muscular tube which uh, on one side it is attached to the pharynx, on the other side it is connected to the stomach. Um, in the esophagus, uh, food is present in the form of the bolus, which is coming from the oral cavity. The uh, muscles of the esophagus 
contract and relax um, at specific intervals so that the bolus move uh, downwards uh, that is from oral cavity towards the stomach uh, and this happen due to the alternate contractions and relaxations of the muscles of the esophagus. So, esophagus is specifically designed to um, move the food down. We call this move, type of movement peristalsis. Sometimes uh, we experience um, a situation that is opposite to the peristalsis. We call it anti-peristalsis. When we are ill, uh, we are not well, uh, we experience a vomiting. Uh, that is actually due to the anti-peristaltic movements. That is, uh, the muscles of this uh, esophagus, rather they are contracting and relaxing towards the stomach, they contract and relax in an opposite direction. That is from stomach towards the oral cavity. The result is this, that uh, food goes out of the stomach and esophagus to, from, the, or, uh, from the oral cavity and out. So, we experience vomiting. Um, this is the um, uh, function of esophagus, that is by peristaltic movement, transferring um, food, the bolus, um, from the oral cavity to the stomach. Here in the diagram, uh, you can see uh, a bolus is moving down the esophagus um, towards the stomach. Uh, one part of uh, muscles of the esophagus, you can see, are contracting and the other parts, they are relaxing. In this way, this peristaltic movements, they continue. Now we talk about the stomach. Stomach is a, more precisely a storage organ. Stomach is for the temporary storage of the food. As you can see in the diagram, in human beings, stomach um, is continuous from esophagus and uh, on the other side, it enters inside the uh, small intestine. Stomach have um, uh, three parts, as you can see in the diagram. Uh, uh, main part called cardiac, the main body of the stomach called uh, fundus and then come the third part of the stomach called pylorus. Um, cardiac is the part in which the esophagus enters. Uh, then the pylorus is the main, uh, the fundus is the main body of the stomach and uh, then the pylorus is the lower part of stomach uh, which is enter, entering inside the intestine. Now, fun what are the functions of the stomach? Uh, stomach also have highly contractile walls. Um, inside the stomach, uh, when food enters in the form of bolus, um, the stomach uh, releases uh, three major things. One is mucus, that is to lubricate the food further. Then its wall re walls releases HCl, the hydrochloric acid, to acidify the food. Uh, with the help of which microorganisms in present inside the food, they are killed uh, and an enzyme called pepsinogen. This enzyme, um, when it, it is uh, interacted with the HCl, the hydrochloric acid released by the walls of the stomach, um, uh, convert the inactive enzyme pepsinogen into pepsin. So, uh, HCl uh, performs dual function, number one. It kills the microorganisms in the food and it activates the inactive enzyme pepsinogen into pepsin. Pepsin is the enzyme that break down the proteins. It means that digestion of the proteins uh, starts inside the stomach. Uh, now we know that digestion of starch is already started inside the mouth because of the mylase enzyme produced by the salivary glands. Digestion actually continues in the stomach. By the action of pepsin, proteins are broken down into uh, peptides. Uh, secondly, uh, stomach by its contractions, its strong contractions causes mixing of the contents of the food. Food which is present inside the stomach um, is mixed up with the mucus and the HCl and the, pepsinogen and the pepsin enzyme uh, due to the contraction and relaxation of the walls of the stomach. We call it churning, the churning process. Uh, that is food, food is ground further and mixed up with the enzymes HCl and the mucus. Now, one important thing, stomach releases the HCl, the hydrochloric acid, which is a very strong acid, kills the microbes, um, help the um, uh, uh, pepsinogen and convert it into pepsin. But how the walls of stomach's, stomach itself are protected from the HCl? Uh, actually, 
the walls of stomach have a layer, a thick layer of mucus uh, present uh, upon them, which is secreted by the gastric cells itself. Uh, when we use the term gastric, gastric is always something related to stomach. Uh, so the cells of the stomach, uh, the walls of the stomach, it releases uh, mucus, thick mucus, which covers the layers of the or the walls of the stomach and protect them from um, the action of hydrochloric acid. But sometimes, uh, what happens that if there is an abnormal condition, stomach is uh, not able to produce enough mucus or HCl is um, released in higher quantities, uh, HCl can start uh, digesting the walls of the stomach and this may lead to a very serious condition called ulceration, ulcer of the stomach. Uh, but normally, walls of the stomach are covered by very thick layers of mucus and uh, they are not affected by the hydrochloric acid.